Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a streamer node and start earning rewards while providing the streaming service to the platform. So currently streamer has a incentivized node structure that essentially allows you to run up to five nodes from behind the same IP address. And in all actuality, you can actually run all five from the same system, which is what I do. And when I first started doing this, the APY was around 33%. It's now 31%. The more people that join, um, pray the more that this was going to drop a little bit. Currently, they have over 7,000 nodes running. Uh, the node itself is free to set up. However, if you do want to earn rewards on it, you have to, what they call, stake um, some coins in your wallet. Uh, it's actually the data token, which is streamer's token. But in actuality, you really aren't staking it. You're just holding it in your wallet. You're not locking it up. You're not putting it into a contract or anything like that. You're literally just holding it in your wallet. And then every time they tr go to do a reward payment issuance, it looks at your balance and it gives you a percentage of the reward based on whatever your balance in that wallet is. So I'm going to be using a ledger device to set this up. The data token is on the Polygon network. And so I'm going to pull in and you have to have a separate wallet address per node. So if you run five on the same system behind the same IP, you need five different wallet addresses. If you try to use the same wallet address, the first reward claim will work on the first node, but the subsequent ones will fail. So we're going to hop in the ledger live, head over to accounts. And here you can see I have uh, two Polygon accounts, and this one has five of the streamer token in it, and this one has 26 streamer. Now, in Ledger it says streamer, but it actually is the data coin. Uh, it's just, it's labeled as S-T-R-E-A in Ledger for some reason, but it, it really is the data token. So we're going to get back to accounts. And we're going to say add account. We're going to add a new Polygon account. What this is essentially going to do is this is going to create you an additional Polygon address utilizing the same private key. It's going to list both of our accounts and we're going to create a third account here. So I'm just going to name this Polygon 3 so that I can kind of keep track of the matching streamer nodes. Say add account. Now, one of the things with Ledger is if you create an account and you don't send to it, it won't allow you to create another account until you've sent to that. So I couldn't come in. I couldn't create three, four, five real fast. I'd have to create three, send it to three, then create four, then create five. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to send five streamer tokens, or the data token rather, from Polygon 1 to Polygon 3. So we're going to do a send. And I'm going to pick Polygon 1, and I'm going to pick Streamer. And we want to send, actually before we do that, we need to go to 3. And we need to get our receiving address. Which we have here. So we're going to go ahead and copy that. Verify it on the ledger. And we're going to do send. Select streamer, enter our other polygon address, hit continue, and we're just going to send five. Go ahead and say continue. Continue, and then we're going to need to confirm that on the ledger. And in a moment, if we go to accounts and we resync this up, here we can now see that we have streamer on polygon three. All right, so now we have our wallet address and we have essentially our stake collateral, if you want to call it that, that we need to run the streamer node. We're going to hop on over to our server that we want to run this from. As I mentioned, I'm running this on a Synology NAS, so I'm just SSH'd into it, but the same functionality will work on pretty much any Linux box. You just need to install Docker first. 
And then what we're going to do is I'm going to create a folder. So I like to create a folder called um, dot streamer docker and then suffix by the number. So you can see I already have one and two. So I'm going to create three. And now we need to set permissions on this. So I'm going to do a chmod dash recursive 777 on that folder. And now we need to run the configuration wizard for streamer against Docker 3. So to do that, we're going to do docker run dash it to be interactive dash v. And we want to select our streamer docker 3 folder. We're going to map that to the dot streamer folder on the actual docker container. And we're going to be using streamer broker node, the latest version of that. And the argument we're going to be passing in has been slash config wizard. Go ahead and run this. And then it's going to ask you to either generate or import. You can use the up and down arrow to select. We're going to do generate. And it's going to ask us if we want to display it to the screen. I'm going to say no. Uh, but essentially, that's just going to show you the private screen on the screen. At any time, you'll be able to get to it in the um, folder that you created. And here it's going to ask you if you want any additional plugins installed. Don't select anything. Just press the enter key. And it's going to ask you if you want to participate in mining and staking. Yes, we do. And then here it's going to tell you it's recommended to set a beneficiary address for security reasons. And essentially what the beneficiary address is, is we're able to tell it to pay out to our ledger versus paying out to the wallet that it just created on the streamer Docker, which I definitely recommend doing. So we're going to say, yes, we do want to set one. And here we can specify the beneficiary address, which is going to be our polygon address we just created and that we had just sent those five streamer tokens to. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that address. Paste that in. It's going to ask us a path. Just go ahead and hit enter to accept the defaults there. This path is within the Docker container. It's not actually on the system. So we've already mapped that folder in the prior step. That's why we just hit enter to allow this. Now this does use a specific protocol that is a lot of times blocked on VPSs and it doesn't necessarily always work when you're behind a router. So I do recommend disabling it. And the easiest way to disable that is through the config file. So we can do a nano um, dot streamer docker three slash config slash default dot JSON. This is the config file that the node is using to operate. Once it opens, you're gonna see it, and I've already masked these out, but you're gonna see your private key. You're gonna see the beneficiary address and you're gonna see an API key. What you want to do is you want to come into the client after this curly brace, add a new line. You can tab it in to make sure everything's aligned. And we're going to create um, a network tag. So just do network in double quotes, followed by a colon. And then we're going to open a curly brace. We're going to close curly brace. Make sure you add the comma after the end there. And we just need to add one value and we're going to add in here webrtc disallow private addresses make sure you put that in double quotes followed by a colon space and true and what this is going to do is this is going to disable webrtc essentially if you don't do this and you look at the logs you might be seeing that the rewards can't be claimed and it's just a nature of how it communicates with the protocol I have disabled this on all of my nodes and have never ran into an issue claiming after I disabled it. We're going to go ahead and do a control X or Y enter to save. And I'm actually going to go back in and unmask everything. And then uh, we'll proceed with the next step. Now we can actually execute the run command that's going to create the Docker container and start executing it. To do that, we're just going to do a docker run dash s name 
Streamer 3 so that we can distinguish between the other ones. Uh, dash dash restart unless stopped. That way uh, it will always attempt to restart it unless we actually execute a stop command. We're going to run detached. We're going to map the streamer docker 3 volume again to the dot streamer folder. So slash home slash streamer uh, dot streamer. And we're going to use um, the latest version. Go ahead and hit enter. And now we can see it is up and running. Now if we do a docker logs and our name, which we did streamer3 dash dash follow. If we go ahead and run this. We should see the output from this container and we should see that it's communicating with the network. And it should give us some information on how we can actually view our node from the Explorer. All right, and we can see some information here. So you can see it detected the NAT type, uh, which was a full cone on this one. And uh, here we can see that WebRTC is disabled, which is good, that's what we wanted. It's already connected to a tracker, so that's great. And we can see our wallet address information and all that. And if we wanted to view it on the Explorer, it does give you a direct link that you can copy and paste this. And this will show you your exact node on the network. And if we hover over, you can see the O and you can see it's in Central Tennessee which is where this specific node is located. Now, it won't be a precise location. It'll generally be um, more so of like where the ISP um, kind of distributes your network connection and not necessarily your home. So it, if it's not in the physical same building, don't be alarmed. It should still be around the same city at least. At this point, we're just going to kind of wait for this to actually claim a reward. And this can take some time, so we're just going to let this run. And I'll see you back when there is a reward that has been claimed. It's been about an hour, and we can see that we now have uh, actually successfully claimed a reward. Right, so this happens automatically in the background. So if you want to check the stats of your node you can easily do that let's go ahead and open a new window here and we're going to go to brewback1.streamer.network port uh, 3013 slash stats slash our wallet address that we use that we generate in ledger so this is our polygon address that we set as the beneficiary so what you want to use there so if we navigate to that what you're going to see is you're going to see your claim count so we have one successful claim. This is our percentage. Obviously, it's going to be very low because we're only staking five coins. And here we can see that reward. And if we switch from slash stats to slash data rewards, this is where you'll be able to see your actual balance. It's still zero uh, because this basically rounds up to two decimal places. And so after we get a handful of claims, eventually this will roll up to 0 0.01 and then it'll just start incrementing um, until it actually issues a payout to our wallet. So at this point everything is set up and running. The one thing I did want to mention is that when you're staking coins there is a maximum stake per wallet of 20,000 of the data coins. So just keep that in mind that you need to you can hold more than 20000 in your wallet. However, there's no additional incentive to do that. In fact, the recommendation from them is to max it out at around 18000 That way, the rewards that you get paid out will automatically compound onto that. It kind of puts you at that 20000 threshold.